Hey, you guys, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Naughty Love Movement. It's your girl, Nikki, and today I'm bringing opportunities for advertisement on my channel. If anyone is interested, they can email us at naughtylove2020 at gmail.com. Our prices are affordable and reasonable, and please reach out to us. We um, can start our videos with any commercials that you would like us to advertise. I look forward to hearing from you. I'm out. One. Hey, you guys. Let me know if y'all can hear me okay. In the chat, I got my AirPods in. The microphone, it was doing weird stuff, so I didn't use it this morning. But I hope you all are feeling good today. Happy Friday. Eve, your girl is tired, okay? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel anyway, Naughty Love Movement. It's your host, Naughty, or Nikki, whatever you prefer. Thank you all for joining me. As you all load up in the room, please make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, share my content. However you share, via text, social media, just share, all right? Um, and these are all the things that help the channel to grow. Um, the like button is how YouTube knows that we're here. Get us into the algorithm, all right? So I appreciate you all joining me. Oh, we got a crazy topic today. I'm going to give you my thoughts on Tasha K's interview with Lester. Um, his, his last name is Lester Bloutier. All right. Um, it was a very salacious interview. Okay. Um, and it was kind of all over the place. But we gonna get into it. I got my notes, Naughty Crew. We're gonna get into the deep. All right. I'ma drop this intro and make sure y'all thumbs up in this video. Yes.
Yes. Good morning to all my people. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Duraz. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, James. Good morning, D. Smith. I appreciate every last one of you joining me today. So let's dive right in because oh, we got a lot to go over. And um, let's just say the interview was very salacious. Um, Lester is kind of all over the place because I believe he is in his feelings. But let's just say Lester is gay for pay, okay? <laughs> He's gay for pay. And just to give you a little background, he grew up in Trinidad as um, he was poor. His family was poor. Um, and he's only been America in America for one year and seven months, according to him. All right. Um, he traveled all over the world. He played soccer in Europe. He played soccer in Saudi Arabia. He was well-traveled. He made a lot of money from it. He was basically like a millionaire uh, based off of him playing soccer or whatever. And um, now he touched on how he ended up in the States, but apparently he was under contract with the soccer team and somehow they defaulted on the contract and he is currently in a lawsuit with them. Right. So he ended up in the state. Now, based on the official King Payne's interview, he ended up coming to the States because his daughter got sick and they were seeking the better health care from the United States. Um, so he was here on a travel visa and ultimately ended up overstaying the travel visa. Now, how he said he got in contact with Larry Reed, um, it was during the height of him and Bishop Whitehead beefing. Um, and he reached out to Bishop Whitehead. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Bishop Whitehead is um, the bling bling pastor. Um, where he was robbed. He had a church in the Bronx. He was robbed. Everyone thought it was um, a fake robbery the way it, it looked. And ultimately, it was a real robbery. But he is under federal indictment right now as we speak um, for scamming the church. So for those of you who don't know who Bishop Whitehead is, He's another scamming pastor. He he basically like stole a whole church or whatever. That's the wrong screen. He stole a whole church and um that's why the feds came down on it. Yeah. Okay, so this is Bishop Whitehead. They also call him the bling bling cat pastor. And I'm sorry, if my pastor living better than me. I'm looking side eye, okay? You see all these fake Gucci suits and Fendi suits and probably um, Don Juan hooked him up. Y'all know Don Juan is the famous. He's the one that brought all the, um, he was responsible for a lot of the 90s fashion with the um, fashion designers emblems on it and stuff like that. But anywho, Bishop Whitehead and Larry Reed were beefing hard, okay? Because Larry Reed decided to call him out the way he always does. Hey, in my opinion, he decided to call him out just like he does other pastors because he's always, like, trying to out another pastor for being a false prophet or out their sexuality. That's Larry Reed's M.O., okay? Um, and I believe this is why all of this is coming down on his head right now because before you did like be be careful of the grave you dig for someone else because you may be digging your own grave all right so that's just a little background on lester and how he ended up in the state so from there from the beef with bishop whitehead because he was in talks with him first that's how he got wind of who larry reed was and so he started DM, DMing him on the gram like, yo, you funniest or whatever. And that's how they started exchanging messages or whatever. 
And also one of his friends who worked for immigration told him, if you leave the country, you're going to be banned for like 10 years because he overstayed his visa. So he started revealing to Larry his situation or whatever. But Lester <laughs> said, and let me tell you, all these men, Vincent, Lester, they all opportunists. That's what, that's what I got. They all opportunists. And so he said he saw that Larry was very feminine in his way. So he was like, hmm, let me see how I'm going to make this an opportunity to get what I want. Yes, it's all confusing with all the drama. Thank you, Michelle. So um, he basically was like, yep. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a get at him. I'm a scam him. That was his whole goal. All these people are twisted and crooked. Um. So he started talking to Larry V on Instagram, telling him a story. They started exchanging freaky pictures. Like Larry would send him pictures of him playing with his stuff or whatever, and then he'll send pictures back or whatever. So then that leads to Larry asking him if he's a top or a bottom. And so according to Lester, he's not familiar with homosexual the homosexual world. So he had to ask Larry to explain what that was. And so his response is, I'm both. But Larry re responded and said, I'm a bottom. Ciao. So from there, from their Instagram exchanges, Larry starts flying them around. He ends up in Miami. And while he had his stay in Miami, Larry was paying for all his hotels. He was giving him money, okay? And so according to Lester, he was partying it up. He was sleeping with mad women. It was just crazy. But... It, at this point, they had not even seen each other, met each other in person. Larry was just putting the bill, which I was just like, that's weird. Now, I was just like, I thought you were smarter than this, Larry. I thought you were smarter than this. I just said, shoo, child. This is just too that's much. That's suspicious. That's weird. I ain't just paying for somebody and I don't know them. I'm just talking to them on Instagram. Y'all let me know. Do y'all find that crazy? So yeah, Larry was like being his sugar daddy or whatever. And um, Lester at this point was pushing like, hey, let's make a contract because I'll pay you all your money back. And Larry's response was, God will bless me. It's all right. So he was running up $8,000 hotel tabs, everything. But one thing I, like his demeanor during the interview came off very arrogant. He claims his confidence. He's always been confident because he's a good looking guy or whatever. Um, and he's not a pushover. And that's one of the things him and Larry had conflict with because um, he, couldn't be controlled by Larry. And Larry would start getting frustrated with him because he's just running up a tab or whatever. And Larry's not getting nothing in return. And we all know Larry is about his his payback, his link back. All right. So he also, Lester also revealed that he was married once before this. He does have an older daughter who lives in Trinidad. He did have a girlfriend here when he first came to the States. His girlfriend was from Brooklyn and he was saying like, if they had fun, but she was just, you know, Brooklyn chicks are straight up. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, yeah, like I was dealing with her for a month and she was just like, yo, you mine, you mine. And he was just like fell in line, but it didn't last long or whatever. So ultimately, Larry got frustrated 
and was like, Lester, I need you to come to Georgia. So that's when Lester starts pushing a contract. But he says before this, Larry was giving him when he was in Miami, like $4,500 a month on top of paying all his hotel fees, his bills and everything. Like who does that? That just don't make no sense to me. But he also revealed like Larry has apartments all over the place so that he could accommodate all his boy toys. He has apartments in LA, Atlanta, North Carolina, just for all his boy toys. So Lester then moves to Georgia. Um, and he moved to Georgia as his personal chef because he knows how to cook. You know, a lot of Caribbean men, their parents teach them how to cook from youth or whatever. And let's um Larry fell in love with his food. He's like, I just need you to cook for me. And so they based the contract off of that. But Naughty Crew, for every meal that he would bring Larry, Larry was paying him $1,900. And he says at this point, they had not been intimate yet. And he also says that for every bit of money he would get, he would send 80% back home to Trinidad and just live off like a thousand dollars. And he said, like, whenever he would like blow his money, hey Carol, um, he would just go back to Larry and throw a temper tantrum, and Larry would give him more money. He also revealed like Larry's life is basically miserable because everyone around him just takes, 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 takes. That's all they do is take from him. He got to pay for everyone around him, his kids, his ex-wives, his boy toys. He got to pay all of them. He a whole big sugar daddy out here. But Lester says he was hated by Larry's entourage. Um, Vincent, well, Marco. He revealed that Marco is his permanent boy toy. He's tied to Larry for life. So then the subject came up about him staying into the country. And that's when Larry suggested that he get married. Um, and at first he offed up his ex-wife, Lisa, who is now a lesbian, by the way. Like Larry done did her so wrong that she turned lesbian. Yes. She turned lesbian. And it just sounds like everybody surrounding Larry is never been swallowed up, swallowed up, swallowed up, honey. Okay, so then, um, Larry said, You know what? That's too close ties with me marrying my ex wife. So then he offered up his cousin Latrice, who I found out has rotten teeth, by the way. <laughs> But Larry had sent Latrice to cook for Tasha K. And Tasha was like, mm, not with them rotten teeth. She was like, she couldn't, her husband was like, they couldn't wait for her to leave or whatever, but she could make a good salad. Mm -hmm. Isn't it crazy? So ultimately, Lester ended up marrying Latrice. But he revealed that he wanted to smash Lisa, the wife. I'm telling you, this interview was all over the place. It's salacious. And if I sound like I'm all over the place, that's how the interview was, okay? Um, and one thing that gave me pause, in the process of saying he wanted to sleep with Lisa, Larry's ex-wife, he was like, actually, he wanted to smash his daughter, too. Like, if his daughter was older, like 20, 24, he would have hit that. Okay. Boy, bye. Like... Um, and so he also proceeds like he had access. So Larry got him an apartment. He got him a car when he came to Atlanta. And so Tasha was like, yeah, he seems to buy everybody a car. He bought Conscious TV a car. Conscious TV is another content creator that is on Larry's payroll. Mm -hmm. 
still out here windmilling for him. Like, boy, why? He also revealed that all of the monies was coming from the church. All the, like, all his, yes, they are. They are sexual deviants. Make sure y'all thumbs up this video. Support the channel, please. Okay, because the things I'm talking about, YouTube does not like. So please support the channel. Donate to the channel. Super chat, super sticker, cash app, please. And let's not forget, I paid my $12 so I could get this info for y'all. Okay, so help your girl out. So, at this point, it's like six or seven months into their relationship. This is when things start getting physical. Now, according to Lester, he only slept with Larry twice. According, that's his word, okay? Um, but he started challenging him about his H to the I to the V, okay? Like, let's get tested. Um, Lester also revealed that he knows that he has, this is Lester words. I'm not saying it, okay? This is all legit. Lester said it. He said he knows that he was HIV positive because he's seen the medications and he knows the medications or whatever. And he also seen the prep pills and stuff like that. And so Tasha saw press to him, like, did you sleep with him unprotected? And so he said the first time he used protection. The second time he didn't. But he went and um he went through Larry's doctor to get the prep and he had prepped up for like three months. And so he asked the doctors if he'll be okay. I'm sorry. If you know this, ain't no amount of money in the world that's going to make me expose myself to that ailment. I'm so Child, but he revealed that he was like, Larry only got five inches and he only <laughs> lasts 30 seconds to a minute. So he said for five inches and for 30 seconds, I'll be gay for you. I told you he gay for the pay, child. That's why y'all got to watch these men. Y'all got to ask questions and get tested. You better find out their history. Because they and then he also revealed that he used to be involved in a lot of orgies with trannies. Um, yeah, but he not gay, though. He just sexually curious. And so then, um, as he's talking about all his escapades and stuff like that, he reveals that he was violated as a child by a man, an older man, and stuff like that. And he never revealed it to anyone but his daughter. Um, but he carried that with him. And so Tasha K challenged him, was like, do you think you were hypersexual as a result of it? And um you know, this regular sex with women just wasn't enough for you. And so that's why you started exploring transsexuals. And he started bragging, like, I've been with the best trannies, bad bodies, this and that. But that's still a man. That, that's still a man. That's still a man. Okay. So as he's, um, he, he, when he moved to Atlanta, he inserted installed cameras in the apartment that Larry was paying for. And that's how he has videos of Larry and him in the act. And so he said he's going to release it. He's going to release it. And Tasha said, wait a minute. What you mean you want to release it? He's like, yeah, I'm going to just release it out to the world. Um, because Lester has a gripe with Larry. And let me tell you why. Because Larry couldn't have his way, Larry contacted Lester's sister and his mama and basically paid them and released the tape. And he paid them to release the tape in Trinidad. And because he's well known in Trinidad or whatever. And so, you know, it, you, being a homosexual in the Caribbean is taboo. Okay. They, they just or not for it or whatever. Um, so he was talked about, dragged through real bad, and his daughter found out about the tape. So he had to sit down and talk to his daughter and have an adult conversation and let her know like his history 
he's basically a sexual deviant just as much as Larry. I'm just saying, like, he's basically a deviant just like Larry or whatever. But he had to have the conversation with his daughter. Ultimately, he said his daughter, it was no love loss. His daughter loved him unconditionally. And that's the only person he told about his trauma. His trauma took place when he was nine years old. He was not penetrated, but he was fondled with. He um, had oral for him, and his little bussy was played with. And one thing Tasha revealed, like, maybe that's why you okay with being a bottom is because, like, you had that happen to you. And once that sensation is set off, you kind of yearn for it. Oh, my God. This is just crazy. I can't believe I watched this crap. <laughs> so, yeah, Larry proceeded to pay for his rent. He had access to Larry's cars. And on top of that, he was getting $4,000 a month. Larry was tricking hard, honey. Larry was tricking hard. And, but the reason why Larry released the SEX tape between them is because Lester couldn't be controlled. Like, Lester wouldn't go on the trips with all his boy toys and stuff like that. He didn't want to mix and mingle. He didn't want to have orgies with um Larry and his boy toys. So he got mad and had a little bitch fit and released the tape as, like, revenge porn. So to me, it's just establishing um patterns of behavior. But Larry did try to cut him off because he see he couldn't get his way and he saw that he wasn't gay. But once he got to Atlanta, that's when the big bucks rolled in, okay? Larry started giving him upwards of $15,000 a month. Like, why? But he said, okay, he got with another guy who was an African who he knew from working overseas. Yes, abusing the church donation. That's where all it came from. Um. To make Larry jealous, he started messing with another guy. But he said he couldn't get off. But the guy offered him $10,000 to sleep with him or whatever. But he was like, he couldn't get it up because I guess he just wasn't attracted. But he said he tried Vi Viagra and everything and he couldn't get it up. But ultimately, the African paid him $5,000, but it did make Larry jealous. Tasha encouraged him to not release the tape, to release it on OnlyFans so that he could get money for it. He basically went on to say that his family sold him out, his mom and his sister, for um, a payout from Larry. That's messed up. Like, there's no loyalty. But Lester said they could be bought easily. And, and he was the one, like, that was providing for the family back home all those years. So for them to sell him out, he was hurt. When Tasha asked about the unprotected sex, she asked if he was concerned and stuff like that. And he said that Larry was telling him that um, his bodily fluids have the Holy Spirit in it. And we heard that in Vincent. <laughs> we heard that in Vincent um, video. When Larry was like, I, I, I ejaculated in you for 13 years you have my spirit up in you his words um so tasha kind of presses him like what do you consider yourself as bisexual but you know and he was like i'm bi curious and he said the two times that him and larry were together intimately um he had to be extremely intoxicated high or something. He said Marco is Larry's bitch. 
he Marco ended him up ultimately marrying Lisa, Larry's ex-wife. This is a cesspool of sin, okay? But ultimately, everyone that you see around Larry, he has to take care of all of them. He has to pay them all to keep his secrets. Well, he ain't pay enough because it's all out there now. And Tasha brought up the fact that Larry Reed looks very different. Like, his weight has drastically dropped in the last, like, couple of months. And Lester said it's probably the HIV or the, um, the stress from his family leeching off of him. He said he would have to dumb himself down around Larry um, because um, Larry has to always feel like he's the smartest person in the room. Not to my knowledge, he's not working with the church, but he been using YouTube and all um, Station Head basically as like a virtual church and people have been donating to that. Like people, be careful of the waters you the seeds you water. But ultimately, Lester is Larry's karma, honey. Lester is just as diabolical as Larry Reed, if you ask me. And so then he gets in, into the PE, Larry being a pedo, because he started hearing um, from Bishop Whitehead about Larry violating little boys or whatever. And according to Lester, Larry admitted to sleeping with Levante when he was underage. And he put it as like, it was a mistake that I had made. You know, it was the weakness of the flesh. And according to Lester, it took everything in him not to knock him out because it triggered his trauma. And then Larry was spinning back to his, saying that he was great as a kid as well. You know, ultimately, what, what it comes down to, both these men were violated as children, and then they turned predator, period. They turned predator. But the interview was all over the place. A lot of it gave me pause. Um, I think he was more real with the... Um, the official King Payne interview, because with Tasha K, I feel like he tried to play it up more. Morning, MB. Exactly. MB triggered his trauma, but except he kept accepting stolen funds. So let me tell you something. Vincent, aka Buddha, um, um, Lester, Marco, they all equally yoked. They all equally scavengers, predators, sexual deviants, if you ask me. And they all are a result of unhealed trauma. But Larry, so you cannot go along no more trying to drive this straight narrative. You are not a straight man. And that's the problem people are having. People don't care that you're gay. It's the fact that you're um, it's the fact that you're you're trying to drive this false narrative and the fact that you're using funds that should go towards supporting the church for your personal harem to support your personal harem and it's just not right and for the life of me i don't understand why people support this crap and give money like these people are making this man a millionaire i don't know i'm gonna drop the link i'm gonna um, see anybody come up and sound off about this it was just a very salacious interview um Give me one second, Naughty Crew. I just got to log into work and I'll be right back.
All right, let's just see what's going on, Nadia. I don't believe her people, her people, her people that want anyone to feel the way they did. I'm not surprised by anything. Larry did an interview with Storm Monroe and our mom would give that that said it all. Exactly. And he still was trying to deny being um gay. He was like, I don't like that term. I heard that interview. I don't like those terms or whatever. And um Storm was pushing him, like, well, what do you call it? What do you call it? Um, but at, at the end of the day, Naughty Crew, my conclusion is, like, Vincent Buddha, the money must have ran out. out. That's why he ran his mouth. Vincent, I mean, Lester says, you know, Bishop Whitehead had leaked his phone number, and that's the reason why he, like, started to come forward. But ultimately, money is the motivation behind all it is. If Larry would have continued to pay for his silence, I think Lester would still been going along with it. Although he tried to set it up to be like, oh, I was looking at him as an opportunity. I was using him. Y'all always using each other. Y'all always crabs in the barrel on top of each other. And at the end of the day, Once he confessed about Levantre, why didn't you go to Levantre and back up his story? Him, Bo you know, Vincent, a.k.a. Buddha, like, y'all want to expose him and then run and hide. And it's supposed to leave, but it was victims in the process of all of this, and none of you, none of you stood up for the victims. And for that, I feel like y'all weak as period. Y'all weak and y'all all got dirty deeds, as far as I'm concerned. I said it. Dirty dick harem. I said it. 
Mm, mm, mm. None of them really standing on way. Uh, ever yeah. in life, I stand on business. You, you guys, drop me somewhere, I stand on business. You, you, you drop me in your hood, man. I stand on business. Yeah, I've been stood on business. I've been stood on business. Ever in life, I stand. Yeah, I stand on business. Yeah. Stand on business. Yeah. Stand on business. Yeah. None of them standing on business, but. Something about the big, something big about to happen because I know Couture Bay said she reported it to the feds, um, the misappropriation of funds from the church's money. Okay. Um, also, what I feel like is a crime in this situation, not only with him messing with little boys, but him using his peen as a weapon. Okay. Because that is against the law, too. Knowingly spreading some ailment that you have. And I'm, that's, a, that's against the law. You're basically using your body parts as a weapon. Who knows how many people he infected? It's disgusting. Who knows how many people he infected? And Lester, you a fool. Like, ain't no way I know somebody knowingly had that and they going up in me with no protection. You nasty. And I just found the way he was even dressed for the interview was like, what are you trying to be, a porn star? I mean, shirt open. I was just like, button up your shirt. Don't see all of that. Don't nobody want to see all of that. Yeah, it's your wide open. I'm talking like pelvic area showing it was just like mm, yeah if i did my vibes all of their wives need to get tested and that's the that's the salacious part about this whole thing like these men are married they're walking around with wives and bending it over make it make sense to me I was, you know, ultimately, I was just utterly disgusted. <laughs> and I'm going to just move on from that because I just, uh, I just couldn't believe what I was hearing. There's less outrage than expected. He admitted that he seen Larry's skin with lesions on it and things like that. So who knows? Maybe his disease progressed. Because I just feel bad because, like, they all going around with this um, horrible behavior. When Hadia Broadbent just lost her battle with um, living with HIV AIDS all her life. And she acquired it, not by her own doing. She acquired it from the womb. Her mother passed it on to her. And these mofos is running around like it's nothing to be playing with. Okay? Playing with people's lives. You remember this little girl who had no choice? Ooh, child. She had no choice in the matter, but she she made the best of it. She was a, she went on to be an activist and educating people about HIV AIDS. And then you got these ignorant mofos. Because Lester, to me, is nothing more than a common prostitute. Period. And he the type of dude that'll sell his soul for any amount of money at the end of the day. So, like, all these people coming out now, y'all don't look like no hero. You only select what body already knew. I mean, you could look at Larry's mannerisms and tell that he's gay. 
he smacked his mouth a little bit too much for me. Shout out to the Neighborhood Talks. And rest in heaven, Hadia Broadbent. We appreciate all that you have um, given to society. You know, um, she it's just another example. Like, she ain't asked for that. All right, we're going to touch on a little bit of trending topics, and then I'm going to get out of here. Um, so congratulations to Northwest, Kanye West, and Kim Kardashian's daughter. Um, because despite how demented the two of them are, North is thriving. Shout out to the spiritual world. Northwest becomes the youngest artist to chart on the Billboard Hot 100 list with her talking at Jesus at just 10 years old. So congratulations to her. She looked just like Kanye. Good morning, Miss Quiet Kaiser. Good morning, um, Juice. Thank you for joining. So congratulations to her, because despite all the chaos that goes on around her, she is still thriving. Um, Tiffany Haddish, she is out here um saying that she's traveling to. Israel. Shout out to Hollywood Unlock for this. Still trying to figure out. She's trying to get back in good graces of the people so bad. Um, As you all know, she recently was ar arrested on a DUI. But I think something happened where they dismissed the charges and she vowed she stopped drinking altogether. Um, but this is another weirdo being sued again. She's being sued again. So she was sued by the children um, for putting them in that situation where um, they were violated, basically. Um, and so then now their mother is turning around and suing her. Tiffany shouldn't have cracked jokes about finding a man in Israel. I, I, I got to say in our morning meeting, it's like she's a comedian for crying out loud. Is she? Here we go. I don't feel more baby. Yes, I'm just on the airplane. Business class. On my way to Israel. I'm sorry, Yamanika. I'm sorry, Yamanika. I'm going without you. I'm sorry. I'm going to go meet my future man out there. I'm out. I'm out. Going to the Holy Land. I suggest you all do it. Why go? Why not go? Why not? It's orange juice. It's not a mimosa. Champagne gave me gas. I would never do that to these people. Yeah, it's just orange juice. It's just it's real orange juice, I think. Mm -hmm. I might come back and look huge, baby. On my way to Tel Aviv, then to Jerusalem, then I'm going to the Dead Sea and go and get me some. Gonna have some fun, yeah. It's gone. I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with what she's saying. Um, maybe she is trying to have a spiritual awakening. You know, Tiffany Haddish, she is Jewish. So. I don't see why everybody's making a big deal. She is a comedian. Good morning, Couture Bay.
She is a comedian. And BMV feels like she tries too hard to be something she isn't. Shay B says she ain't right. Yeah, her future man. I mean, everybody deserves to have a partner. She definitely needs some help. Oh my God, do right. <laughs> do right, said it. <laughs> She's a Chester. She's a Chester. I think Tiffany Addis just needs to stay off live. We're not ready for you, Tiffany. It's too soon. It's too soon, Tiffany. Stay offline. <laughs> we haven't forgiven y'all. <laughs> we haven't forgiven you yet. <laughs> too soon, too soon. MBMB said, I like her, but she's not a com not as a comedian. Yes, she's searching for love. So she's going back to the motherland. She's going back to the motherland, period. <laughs> To get her man. So Kodak Black was released from jail. And they put. I know. Why is that? Why don't they drag Ari Spears as much as her? Good question, Bree. Why don't. Why. Is it because he a man? But he was involved with the, the heinous acts as well. You don't hear nothing about Ari Spears. He's disgusting, Ari Spears. I don't find him funny either. But why they drag Tiffany more than they drag him? Make it make sense. So yeah, Kodak Black, he was released from jail and they caught the footage after his release and he was not happy. He was not happy. Shout out to Morning Juice Pop. Yeah, and you'll see him here. Uh, he was actually, he's been behind bars since December. He was a violation of probation. He was actually free today. He comes out of the Broward jail. I walk up those steps and there's Kodak Black. And uh, the first thing I was alone without a photographer, he threatened to punch me. And then our photographer gets up there and you saw it there on, on the video. Now, I, I don't know if we have the capability to do this, but if we can listen to that sound one more time, I want you just to see what Kodak Black was doing. Can we, can we listen to that again? Oh, that's crazy. If we can't listen to it again, you heard it the first time. He, okay, he picks up a rock and he just chucks it at our photographer. You know, this is very interesting. This is somebody who's been in trouble. Okay, we're going to do it. Let's listen to that again. Don't throw anything at our camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah. throw anything at our camera. Well, and you'll see him here. Uh, yeah. Don't throw uh, anything at our gosh, camera. Call the cops, call the cops, call the cops. So what happened after that, uh, and we have more audio that we'll play for you later tonight, Kodak Black threatened to punch me repeatedly. And, uh, you know, we didn't back down. We're simply doing our job, trying to get this, this guy coming out of the Broward jail. Yeah, Don't throw uh, it at our camera. Call the cops, call the cops, call the cops. Let me tell you something. Why y'all all up in that man's face? He just got out of jail. Like, give him some room. He, he wrong. Don't get me wrong. He wrong, but he don't want y'all in his face. And let me tell you, because Kanye be cursing out the paparazzi all the time. They don't have no boundaries. Like, if I was just getting out of jail, which I, I'm too cute for jail. Yeah, I'm too cute for jail. I wouldn't want no camera shoved in my face. You know he smelled like last week's jail cell. He's stinking, breath stinking. Who knows when the last time he took a shower. But to me, they was trying to set him up so he could go back behind bars. MBMB says they seen um, Kodak seems to be getting a lot of passes. Kodak seemed like he on drugs. I said it. Like, why y'all taunting him? 
And then the first thing they like call the cops. Y'all could have just backed off when he said, leave me alone. That's right, do rag must be rusty, all that. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the um comments. He does, I mean, Kodak always doing the most, but like paparazzi always doing the most too. Oh, so Masika. Hold on. Can y'all hear me? Testing, testing. Okay, we back. Okay, he wanted space, but at the same time, why didn't he walk away? True that, like, because I'm not doing anything to go back in that musty, stinking-ass jail. Okay? <laughs> but paparazzi have been a problem forever. Forever, forever, forever. Up next, I want to... <laughs> they saying Trump was right in 2020. Y'all let me know. I got this clip. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think. Trump is fucking a lunatic. He was trying to warn us. Listen to this. Over 130 legislators in this chamber have endorsed legislation that would bankrupt our nation by providing free taxpayer-funded health care to millions of illegal aliens, forcing taxpayers to subsidize free care for anyone in the world who unlawfully crosses our borders. These proposals would raid the Medicare benefits of our seniors and that our seniors depend on while acting as a powerful lure for illegal immigration. That is what is happening in California and other states. Their systems are totally out of control, costing taxpayers vast and unaffordable amounts of money. If forcing American taxpayers to provide unlimited free health care to illegal aliens sounds fair to you, then stand with the radical left. But if you believe that we should defend American patients and American seniors, then stand with me and pass legislation to prohibit free government health care for illegal aliens. You was trying to warn us. Listen to this. Okay, so say what you want. Trump trying to warn us and look at where we are today. They giving them our money away. They giving them everything. Some of these immigrants are getting more than us in aid. But Trump tried to warn us in 2020. And look, let me tell you, Trump is a piece of to me, okay? But I could say that he was right about a lot of things, especially the wall. Come on, look at look at Durag. Durag is a Trump supporter, y'all. Money, housing, and, and look at where we are. Durag said, y'all better vote for him. He'll help us. Durag feel like he could save America. I'm just saying, he warned us about a lot. It, it, look, I'm, I'm one to admit, like, when he was um, talking about the wall, I'm like, that's just silly. But now I see why he wanted the wall. I was wrong, Naughty Crew. I know I could say I was wrong. Oh, yeah, he will. But you got to choose the lesser of two evils. Um, messing around with Biden, we're going to be bankrupt as a country. Okay, Michelle, she said the amount of assistance the immigrants are getting and we can't even feed our own folks is sickening. I mean, do you see the homelessness in America? It's out of control. Torben said, child, they tried to give away our benefits, and Abbott said, no. Who else we got to choose from? 
bag, okay? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but my Home Depot, my local Home Depot is flooded with immigrants. And Bree, I know you down there, um, down south in Texas. I already know. Y'all right there on the border. I can only imagine. Good point, Durag. Good point. We can't go to their country and get what they get with from us here. Okay, Miss Kaza said she running for president. Vote for her. Okay, somebody. We need more options. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. But y'all, it's so important. It's so important for us to vote this year. Do your homework. Exactly. They are rushing to make the illegals American citizens. It's wild times. It, it's this. But what Trump predicted, he said it. He said they're going to try to give away y'all benefits and stuff like that. They barely got benefits for the elderly. And I feel some sort of way because I have an elderly mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want nothing taken away from her. She worked hard all her life. She put in 38 and a quarter years for the government. She worked for the post office. Yes, she did. 38 and a quarter. She should not be slighted. Do Rag says, so go, Susie, <laughs> Miss Kaiser for 2024. Exactly, you know, um, but be careful because it's we we going into some dangerous times. They are not vetting these people. They are letting all type of convicts, rapists, murderers, all up in our country. America is not safe, and don't be opposed to getting dual citizenship elsewhere. Because let me tell you, I'm gonna look into it. Miss Kaiser said, "All my life, I had to fight." Immigrants come here and get more rights than we did when we came over as slaves and built this country. We can't even get reparations. And y'all giving all our money away. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, up next, I want to get into Masika. Masika is from Love & Hip Hop Hollywood. Um, she is known for stealing Hazel E. Man, who was everybody man. Ooh, ooh, we got a guest. Hey, friend. Hey, I'm getting ready for work, so I'm going to be super fast. <clears throat> Sorry. But what I was going to say was this. Um, Pay attention to the legislature and pay attention to where they're housing the illegal immigrants at, whether they're from Mexico, Ukraine, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Uh, fight back. Don't allow them to just um, give away American citizenship. The reason I say that is, uh, y'all know I work for a big corporation. So I was doing this guy's taxes. He's had his daughter in America for five, three years. Three years, she's five now. From Mexico, we got her so she could have a better life because he was like, look, I'm married to a, a woman, married to the love of his life, and went and got his baby. Because he was just like, in Mexico, is horrible living. He said, my packet has been on hold for a long time. Mind you, this is a five-year-old girl. But he told me they are frontlining the, the Europeans, uh, so that they can be citizens. Pay attention. Don't allow them to house in y'all schools. Don't allow them to give away free subsidies. Absolutely not. Uh, if they're coming here as a safe haven, they should already have a home. Y'all know that to be fact. So no, 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 no. Why do we have to take on that financial debt and burden? Hence why I'm telling everybody, file your taxes because you don't want to tax debt because they'll secretly do something. We know how the government is. They're shady. They'll increase something, and then, oh, you owe money. That's what I'm telling everybody. File your taxes this year. Y'all see we gave Ukraine all that money. People are going to be getting pink slips, not just us, the celebrities too, so pay your taxes. But I had to make sure I said that. 
Thank you, Bray. I appreciate you. Of course. And I can't wait for you to talk about the. Have you talked about Larry, Larry and the, and Lester? I did that earlier. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. I, what do you, because I feel like he, he's just as um bad as Larry and Vincent to me. Like he well, is an amateur. He's um, listen, that's a Caribbean man. He was honest. He was transparent. He wasn't over there playing the reindeer games. He just wanted Larry's money. And he said yeah. it. He was like, if I can get free money, I'm going to get free money. He was sending it back home. He told his daughter what was up. Yeah. Like, Look, gay for pay. And he really exposed how thirsty Larry is and how desperate the people around him are. So mm. Daryl Moore was in my chat this morning and he said he's going to start calling out names. I can't wait. I cannot okay, wait. Okay, I, I subscribe to Daryl Moore, so and, I can't wait either. He said, I mean, he said he's getting his um his verdict vatic vacated, vacated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. um for those of you who don't know, Daryl Moore, Larry Reed sued him, um for bringing out the victims of Larry Reed. So he sued him, and they were in court for a minute. You know, um they still kind of entangled, but. Um, with these men coming forward, it kind of justifies what he was doing. Um, one of the major things is the fact that Lester was able to get a, a mission from Larry about what he did to Levantre. Yes. Um, <laughs> Listen, when, and I always go to show y'all, ladies, you could get a lot about these men if that man made Larry trick off for seven to eight months. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all got to understand the power of the tongue. He was like, I don't need this man. But what was he doing? Oh, you're such an amazing person. You're so mm -hmm. awesome. Love light. I don't I don't want to do this gay stuff. That was, that was the trigger. He knew what to trigger him with. I don't want to mm -hmm. do this gay stuff. I'm going home to my girl. I'm going home to my girl. And Larry was spending that money. 8000 15000 Just to be in that man's presence, baby. Ugh. I think he said overall he garnered like over a hundred thousand dollars from Larry Reed. Of course, and he wasn't even there a long time. He only he been was there for a year and seven months. He was only there a year. A year. Look what but they he's mean. Definitely gay for pay. <laughs> he is gay for pay. He said, "Look, this is what I did. This is what I got. A year and was able to do that. This man, and he said, I am going to destroy Larry. I believe him." I, I believe, believe him, him because you tried to say, get him deported. And he said, I had to marry your cousin, please. Yeah, with no teeth, rotten teeth in her mouth. Right. I had to marry your cousin. <laughs> and he said she was plus size. He was like, I had to marry his plus size cousin. And Tasha was like, you don't like plus size? He said, I like big girls. He said, but I've had women from all over the world, baby. <laughs> and he, he said, said, he said I would have made it work. He said, I would have made it work had he left me alone. <laughs> but this is what Larry ass get. You know, that's what he get for trying to expose everybody. And look, I just think he met his match in Lester. Baby, Lester is a whole pro. Larry, Larry, anybody with a oh, child, he said everybody over there is gay. So that means Bishop Bernard Jordan is gay. That means all the evangelists is gay. I believe you, Lester, baby. You did something that the the whole realm of dusty idiots have not done. And pay attention mm -hmm. to the people who are silent. Mm-hmm. Pay so, attention. So quick to interview him. Now they have nothing to say. Nothing. Crazy. Quiet. Radio silence. But let me drop Radio. down back in Thank the you, Thank you for having me up. Of course. Always. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye. Thanks. So there y'all have it from Couture Bay's perspective. I told y'all how I opened the show. He was gay for pay. <laughs> oh, let me see. Better exercise your right to bear arms now. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. It's getting crate crate out here. Absolutely. Okay, and BM um MBMB says no country has the infrastructure for this level of migrants. Okay, like prepare yourself. Yes, he was running Larry's pockets. He was all up and through Larry's pockets and had access 
to um his cars and everything else. Uh, and did you see Bree when he was like, I wanted to sleep with the daughter if she was older? Ciao. <laughs> okay, so Masika is on fire. This dirty bottom for ho. Let's get into it. And then we're going to close the show after this. I'll be back maybe for a lunchtime rundown. It depends on if I need my tech. If I need my uh my nap, my afternoon nap. Shout out to Neighborhood Talks for this one. So for those of you who don't know, Masika is baby mother to Fetty Wap. Um, and she's also from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. She's a singer. Um Yeah, Bree, they wouldn't let the Haitians in, but they let everybody else in. That's messed up. Shows how racist this country is. So Masika's hairstylist has received the $300 he claims she ran on. Wait, wait, hold on one second. Let's go back. This is one before this. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is the wrong one. Hold on one second, y'all. All right, let's get into this dirty bottom for her. Mm -hmm. So, Masika. Masika and the pony in action at her V Day dinner. So he, the stylist, was hired to handle her um, birthday hair, her Valentine's Day hair style. Here we go. So Masika is being accused of running off on her hairstylist and friend of ten years for three hundred dollars. What's crazy about this is that it all stems from a little pony she wanted for valentine's day we spoke exclusively with the stylist damien salter damien informed us that he arrived late to masika's home on v-day at 12 p.m despite being scheduled to arrive at 10. however he says there was no issue at the time because her dinner reservation wasn't until 9 p.m and a sewing ponytail is normally a quick hairstyle however masika didn't have any bundles so damien says he was forced to Scavenge through old hair box that contains scraps of hair dating back to Masika's time on Love and Hip Hop. None of the scraps matched her hair color. So he was then forced to look through an old wig box where he found a black wig that he was able to cut tracks from. Damien <clears throat> says he had to color the tracks to hide their white threads. A process that took hours, all right? So this is her with the pony. All right, this is DMs of Masika reaching out about the hairstyle. And so here's the text message. Y'all better tell your B friend Damien that I'm not effing the effing one. This ain't gonna go how you think. You better stop effing playing with me. And then you effing have the audacity to divulge my personal private business about who you saw in my home as if you aren't on an NDA. How effing dare you? Are you TMZ itch? I have yet to announce a divorce or a separation. Now you're effing playing with my life and my kids. You will pay. All right. So apparently she's getting divorced for the umpteen time because she did have a baby after Fetty Watts' baby. So she responds, um, you done been scammed, slammed, and damned by Keisha Cole and everyone else. So she's divulging that 
it's not the first time somebody ran off with his money. So then she says, now I'm going to sue you, bum. You broke ass itch. You clown ass itch. You done been scam slammed and damned by Keisha Cole and everyone else. But I block you, itch ass, for a few days for talking about your tax bracket. And you go to the effing blogs, you messy little bitch. So why you block them? So Because you had no intention on paying him his money. Regardless of whether you like what he did, he still gave you a service, Masika, and you have to pay him. Yes, I love Hip Hop Hollywood. Ooh, um, Hazel E said she was a pro. Now, her and Hazel E got a very, very long history with beefing. They beefing forever, Naughty Crew. All right? Um, ever since Masika stole her man that wasn't her man, but was for the street. Whatever. All these some dirty bottom for hoes. Exactly. She is admitting to the crime. And that NDA is null and void if you committed a crime, Masika. Let me tell you. All right. So ultimately, it looks like She had to fork over the money. So Masika's hairstylist has received the $300 he claimed she ran off. She says he was late for her appointment and took eight hours to do a ponytail. Just being two hours late alone, you should knock off half. But ma'am, you weren't even prepared for him. You were not even prepared for him. You He had to rustle through old hair and to create, to create that pony. Like, girl, bye. Excuses. Excuses, excuses, excuses. She's a trifling. She's a trifling. You hear me? She's a trifling. All right. So total $300. Damon, my entire night was in shambles because of how long my hair took. You were two hours late and took the entire day to do a ponytail that should have taken two to three hours. Just being two hours late alone, you should knock off at least half, but take but take it eight hours. We missed our reservation on Valentine's Day, so we had to wait and call in favors to get a table. We were supposed to be long gone way before Jamar got back, but, okay, hold on. Clearly, that wasn't possible. I never wanted them to meet like that, but because my damn hair took eight hours, it happened. I had no time to take a single picture. I don't have one. We couldn't open gifts. I had an entire con content session scheduled for 5 o'clock that I had to keep pushing back and ultimately reschedule. Now, the photographer is charging me for booking him and canceling on one of his busiest days. I didn't get to go pick up my shoes from Nordstrom's, wasting money ordering those for no reason. I had a few more things I had to do that couldn't that I couldn't do because my hair is not finished. I just don't understand how you still have the gall to tell me $300. Well, you should have worked that out while Damon was there, ma'am. You don't run off altogether and not pay him. So this is Damon's response. He said, I really was going to say $400. Keep in mind, going through that bucket of dirty and it took 45 It took 45 minutes alone, and then you found a unit for me to remove each machine weft one by one, then shampoo the dirty hair, condition, and blow dry the color, <clears throat> the white thread, and redry that. Not to mention color coordinating the black and brown hair for a neutral blend. And I don't think you realize the technique I did to get your hair so slick. Not only the not only that strategize a pattern, oh my gosh, to where your natural hair was not compromised. I don't even do that type of 
serving for anyone without any additional charge. And every time I do your hair, it's the same routine. And I have never charged you for that extra service. You gave me extra work that I didn't anticipate. And I stood up for eight hours to make sure it was absolutely perfect. And I only charged you $200. for the ponytail and all those additional tracks and a hundred dollars for travel you need to tip me honestly i hate that it took longer than expected but you need to take some accountability too for not wanting to buy fresh bundles he's got a point wow it's best for me to not reply to this because i can't believe this that's your response i mean he only broke down his services for you from now on, I'm not going through nobody's dirty hair bins and shampoo. That's a whole additional service. Seriously. So Damien says, what the F? Why would you do this? At least you got the phone call from her you've been waiting on. You can't think you can thank me later. Yo, come on, you wrong for this. Why would you do that? It's petty, tacky, and beneath you. I would have given you. $300, seriously. Like, what the F? Oh, so this is Masika. You do know you wrong. Why would I thank you for putting someone's personal business online? You let Keisha Coles bounce 3K checks to you and not pay you, but you don't put her on blast. Why would you do this to her? For real, for real. Call me. Then our mutual friends went the F off on them. Oh, my God. You could have just paid him. Masika wasn't the only one either, but look where we are now. Yeah, you still ain't got the $300, and now you lost a real friend who always had your effing back. Don't ever speak to me again. The blog has enough space for new stories, sweetheart. You want to be famous too. Wow. This is them going back and forth. So this is the cash app that she finally sent home, the $300. He's a broke ass bum on section eight, and I'm about to report his ass too. He's on a binge and lost his damn mind. Oh my God. So now she accusing him. I think Masika is mad because she got called out, child. Yeah, she's a bird. She's a scammer. She wasn't prepared. Exactly. She's such a simple minded. Yeah, the nerve of this hoe. How she have his back? Never, okay? You just mad, ma'am, because you caught in the act. You was a scammer. You was a scamming dirty butt bottom hoe, period. And y'all remember them dirty feet on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood when Zell was going in on her, okay? Y'all remember Sika Dirty Feet? Y'all remember how them, them dirty ass feet with them run down hills, child. And it just goes to show how these people out here just trying to perpetrate. Y'all remember this thing? This today. Oh, that ass. Y'all remember Masika Dirty Feet, child. Mm hmm. It's giving you broke, Masika. It's giving you thirsty. It's giving it didn't work out in the baby mama land for you. Okay, she just thought <laughs> she just thought that her cootie cat was so good. <laughs> Them dirty feet, girl. Don't got time for these dirty bottom foot hoes. Okay. She stay scamming. She stay fronting. Like, she did not have his back. She did not care. She was trying to rob him. Remember that fight with Hazel E? Good morning, Angela. Deal breaker. <laughs> Dumpy is a deal breaker. 
Yes, girl, get some tap on them heels so you can stop leaning. Shoes look like she need a V8. Sham. But that's all I have for you, Naughty Crew. Okay, let me know. Let's leave it in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about the breakdown of the Lexa interview. I think Larry met his match, ultimately. And I told y'all, Lester is gay for the pay, gay for the pay, gay for the pay. Yes, I'm people with Lena Chow. So I appreciate every last one of you joining me. Please, as you move through your day, make sure you... Uh, ever in life, I stand on business. You drop me somewhere, I stand on business. You drop me... Make sure you stand on business. Ten tones down and don't get swallowed up. Don't get swallowed up, swallowed up. Swallowed up. Don't get swallowed up, honey, okay? It is so easy to get caught up out here, all right? And please make sure you're thumbs up in this video. Subscribe to my backup channel, Naughty Crew Live Podcast, all right? And to all my haters. Up, and I want to say thank you in case I don't thank you enough. I thank y'all, too. Y'all keep the wheels turning over here. I appreciate everybody joining me. Until next time, Naughty Crew, I'm out. One.